would be hard-pressed to remember an environmental issue in the past decade that has captured the nation's attention as much as the debate about coal seam gas. On one side of the debate is a $50 billion Oz industry. On the other, farming communities who are essential to our food security and the sustainability of Australia. When the lid was finally lifted on the impact of both the CSG and shale industries in the US, both the gas companies and state and federal governments of Australia were quick to point out that the situation back home is, well, different. This remains to be seen. Reports trickling in from landholders in Queensland of negative environmental and health impacts similar to those being experienced in America are causing many to doubt the accuracy of what they're being told by the multinationals. Wells supposedly can't leak. Produce water isn't harmful and people living in gas fields can't get sick. Filmmaker Richard Todd, an affected landowner, Dane the Frackman Pratsky, decided to travel to the US to take a look for themselves. They allowed these uh, coal bed methane people to drill wells and pump their produced water into our only source of water, which is called the Kacharis River. And the first thing we noticed on a lot of their agreements was they did not want to take responsibility for damage to your water wells. People lost, you know, their domestic wells, their livestock wells, their artesian wells. All this water they'd pump, we could irrigate with it. They told us we could irrigate with it. Irrigate the whole ranch with the water. And my neighbors flag me down and tell me that there's water coming out around their well house and it smells really, really bad. Within the first year, by then we found out it was salt water. We couldn't it's no good for anything. You can see all the, the salt and soda. Well, what's going to grow on that? No, nothing's going to grow on that. My water was pristine. Yeah. And after this all happened, my water had arsenic and fluoride over EPA levels, maximum contamination levels. The cows started getting sick and, and the crops uh, just wouldn't grow anymore. We did have artesian wells in our winter pasture and they're of course, uh, they've quit and never will never come back. This high sodium and salt water, they couldn't digest their feed, and they die with a full stomach. At that point, had they admitted they'd done something to the water? Oh, no, never. You know, we've always been stewards of the land. We've always tried to improve the land. We, you know, we, we try to do the right thing, and, and, and they just took it, and they, they stomped all over it, and this is, here, we're done with it now. There's so much gas that they don't get out of the water, and they just have to vent it. You know, go ahead and use your water. It won't hurt you. Bathe in it, drink it, but leave all the doors and windows open in your house because, well, your house might explode. All of a sudden, there was this huge explosion. That's Dee's house blowing up at 2 in the morning. Then I started getting pain. Oh, intense pain in my back. But that's part of the chemical poisoning. And she had massive nosebleeds. They would wake up, and the bed would be filled with blood. We find ourselves, instead of being retired, we're at war. I mean, it, it happened in eight years. They destroyed four generations worth of work. And that's the cold, hard facts of what's happened here. And, 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 and I'll tell you what, I just I hope that you folks over there get together and figure out that what they're telling you, it's, it's not true.